Hey everyone, my name is Jane and in this tutorial we're going to explore the shape tool in the eye ornament app. Let's get going. So the first thing we're going to do is open the eye ornament app and when you open the app it comes up with its pre-settings. Now I have other tutorials on this to show you how to get your settings set up to get going on this. You can check those out but I'll just quickly walk you through how I want to set this up to begin with. So you get your black screen to start with. I'm going to go down here to the gear icon and it's going to bring up my settings. I'm going to go to this one here, the square with the slash white black star and I'm going to choose white. That's my background. We're going to close that down and over here I'm going to choose black from my palette. I'm going to leave these sliders except for this blurry. I'm going to take it right down to zero. And then for my wallpaper to start with so that I can show how the shape tool works, I'm going to go into the rosette and I'm going to bring the sections right down to one and choose the rotational. And this is going to give me just a drawing pad so that I can show you how the shapes work without the symmetry getting in the way. Now to get to the shape, we go into our second menu. So we choose this light bulb right here. Our second menu pops up and you want this one here with the triangle, circle and line. That's going to be my shape. And you can see here it also gave me numbers on my sliders, which is kind of handy. So the first thing we're going to do is draw something and it will recognize it as a shape of some kind. So my brush is pressure sensitive. That's the basic setting that, that uh, eye ornament sets you up with. So if I were to draw a line, see how it's pressure sensitive. When I release the line, it recognizes it because I drew it pretty straight. Up here we have the shapes. So we have a straight line, a triangle, a square, and a circle. This S curve here is um, a natural line, but it's an even uh, width. And this one is a natural line with pressure sensitivity. So this is how I drew the line. And you see at either end, I have points that I can drag around and I can make the line shorter and I can make it longer. And I can also go over here to the size of my brush and I can change the size, even though I've already drawn the line. So it basically puts it into an edit mode. So you only get this one chance to edit it though. Eye Ornament is very much a natural drawing program. So you don't have a, a second chance at editing shapes and stuff. It's not really your vector or that kind of a program, but it does allow you to do some adjustments when you first draw it. So again, I can change the thickness of my line. Now, if I were to choose this natural line, but regular thickness, See how it's consistent all the way down, even though the line itself is still a naturally drawn line that has the curves in it. This slider right here is a smoother. It doesn't smooth a lot, but it does take a little bit of the kinks out. So that kind of helps. The other option, because I drew a line, is this straight line. So if I choose the straight line, see how it went perfectly straight? That's a perfectly straight line and I can increase the thickness of it. And I can also make it a really thin line, but it, no matter what, it's a perfectly straight line. So that's kind of handy if you're looking for straight lines. Once you touch the screen again, that's what you get and that's where it stays placed. So just so you know that. So let's go backwards and try something different. Let's try drawing a circle. So again, I'm using pressure sensitive. There's my circle. Now with a pressure sensitive line, even if it's a circle, I still have these operating either ends. Now, if I go in here and I choose circle, it gives me this perfect circle with an even line. So I can make the circle thicker and I can make it thinner. One of the points is the center of the circle. So I can move the center anywhere. And the other point is the width of the circle and the rotation, but it's a circle. So rotating doesn't make a difference, but I can move that circle anywhere I want on the screen and I can make it any size. And people have asked me how I do my dots and this is how I do them. I make these little wee circles and then I make them really, really thick. Even that's a little big right down almost on top of each other. 
So this gray area is just the points that will disappear. The black is where I've drawn, touch the screen and I end up with my dot. So I can just draw a couple of these and see how now I want this to be a circle. It turns it right into a dot. And there you go. And I can move the dot, right? So choose circle and see how this one is making it bigger. It's also actually that one's the size, one that makes bigger. One stays on the outer rim and one goes in the center. So I can move that dot. Let's say I want it in line with these two. So I want it there and then I just bring it in to whatever size and we'll leave it like that. There's my dot. So let's go back and try a square. So now we're going to do a square. Ooh, I got a really big pen going on here. Let's move it down. Now let's see what happens here because I didn't join my ends. If I were to go square, it made it a square. It recognized it. And I can again move the center wherever I want and the other one stays on the outside. So the other thing about this tool is it isn't again a perfect tool. My squares have kind of rounded corners. So although the circle was a perfect circle, the square has straight lines, but my corners are still rounded because I didn't make them perfect corners. If you absolutely want that perfect, perfect square, you could do it with the lines. So let's get rid of the square. And again, let's try a triangle. So if I were to draw a triangle, see again, it kind of curves up my corners a little. So in a way you still have that kind of natural drawn, hand drawn look. So I can make it thicker like that and I can make these triangles and place them wherever I want to place them. So how can I use this, you say? So we go into our symmetry. So let's make this uh, about an eight and I'm going to turn on the grid. So this little honeycomb here will do that for me. Now you can see all eight sections and let's try move this down a little. Let's try the circle and see what happens. So if I were to draw a simple circle and then I ask it to recognize it as a circle, there we are. So I can move the center of my circle onto the line and I can make these bigger and see how they overlap. Now I'm starting to get some of those geometric shapes and I touch it. There you go. You've used the symmetry and a shape to create a beautiful design. So that's kind of fun thing you can do with the shape tool. So let's get rid of that one and let's try um, let's try a different shape. So we're in, in rotation. Let me show you what else you can do with these shapes. So I can draw a spiral and now I can change the size of that spiral. I can make them meet here and I can make them bigger and smaller and I can rotate them. So that's kind of handy. Any shape really that you do that, you can do it with. Let's touch that and get rid of it. As long as your pen is touching the screen, it will recognize that as one item. So this can work with any of your colors. You can use color symmetry as well. So let's try a color symmetry here. Let's do the green and a pink. So we can do this. So let's just do a petal. And I can make that even. And I can make the petals bigger or smaller and I can even move my petals around. Or I can do circles and we're going to make them circles and we're going to make them nice and thick and see how it's fun how they overlap. See how they're overlapping. So uh, let me just put them right about there. Touch the screen. So there you've got your circles and then your pink one and then your green one. So you can see some overlap happening if you do the color symmetry using the shape tool as well. So lots of ideas, but basically that's how you use the shape tool. So have some fun. I'd love to see what you guys do with this shape tool. And if you like the tutorial, remember to please subscribe to my channel and you won't miss any of my future ones. So thanks again for joining me. Enjoy and we'll see you next time.